Hey, what is going on guys? DK. Back at you with another video here to bring on the 8 game NBA main set on Saturday. Before I get into the video, if you guys are new to the channel, my name's DK. I make daily videos and live stream for NBA and NFL slates on DraftKings. If you guys cannot watch these YouTube videos that I do up on Apple Podcasts, I will link down below. It's called the DK DFS Show. If you guys are interested in signing up for premium content, I'll offer that on Patreon.com. Couple different packages, esports, NBA, which includes NFL for free, also linked down below. And then finally, I want to thank Underdog Fantasy for sponsoring the show. If you guys are not familiar with Underdog Fantasy, well, what they have to offer, they have uh, daily fantasy snake drafts, as well as season-long and playoff best ball uh, tournaments. So if you guys want to, uh, after you make your first deposit, you can enter the code DKDFS, DKDFS, all one word. They will honor a, a money-back guarantee up to $100. Uh, and then finally, I want to thank you guys for the continued support. We just hit over 8,000 subscribers the other day. So again, can't, cannot thank you guys enough. Um, if you do enjoy these videos, if you could leave a like button on the video, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and hit the notification bell so you don't want to upload videos you don't want to live. That would be greatly, greatly appreciated. Let's aim for 200 likes in this video. And uh, as always, I will be doing a, a YouTube live stream before lock to go over everything, answer all your guys' questions. So make sure to check out the YouTube live stream tomorrow. But um, yeah, with that out of the way, let's jump in the video. So before I talk about players and the prices of this eight-game slate, let's look back line up here from Friday. So Friday, um, it, it went pretty well for me. Um, finished in fourth place here in the tournament. In this tournament, could have been a massive night. Could have been a huge night. Um, couple things held me back. One, Joel Embiid. Well, first of all, he was only six percent owned, which, I mean, I guess I'm not super surprised about it because. He didn't get ruled in until way after lock, but like I love when stuff like that happens. When the player that I'm like pretty high on gets ruled in, like it's questionable and kind of gets ruled in like later on in the night because they're just gonna be low owned, right? Um, and yeah, six percent in beat at nine four against Minnesota. I was like, I'm taking that all day long. Like if he was out, I was going to Ben Simmons and whoever was starting at center, most likely Dwight, uh, which I kind of told you guys that. But um, yeah, with when he got ruled in, I was like, I'm getting Joel and beat in here. Um, unfortunately, he only played two and a half quarters. That game did not stay close. I thought he would get a shift in the fourth, but they did not bring him back in. So he literally, he had 60 fantasy points in 27 minutes. Imagine if he plays a shift in the fourth. Uh, definitely uh, probably would have uh, taken this one down. You guys knew I was really high on the San Antonio Spurs. I played both DeJounte Murray and DeMar DeRozan. DeMar DeRozan, 14% owned. 47 fancy points. DeJounte Murray, 27% owned, 40 fancy points. Joe Ingles, I swear, he had like 20 at the end of the first quarter and literally did nothing else the rest of the game. Utah is also a team I liked. Uh, but yeah, Ingles was the guy I used there for value. Cody Zeller got in some early foul trouble too. Could have been a better day for him. Now, Pascal Siakam, what, like, I preferred Van Fleet um, to Siakam, but like, Van, or Siakam just kind of fit the lineup once I got him beat in there like that's kind of the he was the last piece in and I didn't think like I thought he's a solid play for sure uh but he was yeah he was the last piece in for me and then Terrence Davis once we got the news that he was starting I liked him for value he did only play like 19 minutes but he had 19 fancy points then Kyrie Irving and he I thought he was a pretty clear play there 50% owned uh the game did blow out but he was still solid at below 9k so um, yeah, can't complain. What was close to a takedown, again, if Embiid plays that fourth quarter, probably would have had it or would have been close. Um, so, yeah, hope you guys had a good night as well. And let's see if we can keep it rolling here for this eight-game slate on Saturday. So, let's see. Let's refresh Bavada here. All right, so we have four of the eight games out right now. Uh, Rockets and Pelicans. It's a 223 and a half over under. The Pelicans are one point favorites. We have Bucks. We have Hornets. It's a 228 over under. The Bucks are seven point favorites. Blazers, Bulls, a 232 over under. This one looks pretty appealing. The Bulls are two point favorites. And Pistons, Warriors, a 224 and a half over under. The Warriors are five and a half point favorites. So let's start off with Milwaukee and Chicago, or and Charlotte, I should say. On the Milwaukee side, Giannis attempted to combo at 10.8K. Well, again, in close games, we've been seeing big Mets for Giannis. 36, 38, 39 there against the Pelicans. So if you think the Hornets can keep this game close, then obviously Giannis looks good as his spend up. I think he's a safe play with some upside. So yeah, I do like Giannis attempted to combo. Middleton at 8.5. 
you know, is a guy that, you know, usually gets around the 40 fantasy point mark. I think he's a decent play, but not a priority for me. Drew Holiday's all right, too. Uh, Brolo's at 5-4. We'd probably get around the 30-minute mark. It just, not a great rebounder, so I don't love it. And that's probably it for me. So really, it's kind of Giannis, and that's it for me. I'm walking. That's normally how it goes to me, unless there's, like, someone that's severely mispriced for the Bucks. It's normally Giannis, and, and that's about it. On the Charlotte side, so Gordon Hayward's at 7-3. Uh, back-to-back subpar performance, uh, performances from him, 25 and 33 fancy points. He's been up and down. We have seen upside from him, but again, he's been inconsistent. So it's a little hard to trust uh, Gordon Hayward, but at least we know the upside is there. So I think he's fine if you want to go there in tournaments. The guards are a little bit hard to trust too. Rogier Graham I'll probably pass on. I don't think I'm going to get to 6-2 P.J. Washington. The guy that does uh, stand out to me is 4.5K for Cody Zeller. Again, he did get in some foul trouble, so lost out in a couple minutes. Probably would have played about 30-ish minutes. And at 4.5K, I think that is still too cheap for Cody Zeller. So I think he's a pretty solid value play. You can take a shot in the mellow ball for tournaments. The minutes have been up and down, right? 28, then 21, then 22, then 30. So it's like obviously not a cash game play, but if he gets extended, if I knew he's going to play closer to the 30-minute mark, I would like him a good amount. Just those minutes are not guaranteed, which makes him a GPP play. Let's move on to Portland and Chicago. So this game is one of my favorite games to target. Damian Lillard at the top at 10-6. Uh, honestly, he's kind of had four games and back-to-back games for no, uh, with them having no CJ McCollum and no Yusuf Nurkic. Like he did not do much in the fourth quarter of that Houston game. Really in the second half, he kind of cooled off, but love the spot from here against Chicago. So yeah, Dame is a really good player at the top. And I do like Ennis Cantor at 7 one 2 uh, 32 and 33 minutes the last couple games. So as long as he stays out of foul trouble, I assume we get those minutes. Uh, it's He's a good point burn a guy, and this is a fantastic spot here against Chicago. So um, I do have some interest there in Ennis Cantor. We got to monitor the status of Robert Covington. We already have Derek Jones Jr. out. If Robert Covington is out as well, then I think Carmelo Anthony is a really solid play in the mid-range. He played 38 minutes. Now he shot the ball terribly. Still one for 23 fans points. So Melo would be someone I would look to there in the mid-range. You know, Gary Trent Jr., if there's no Covington, he'll probably have to play big minutes. Again, kind of reliant on scoring, but I think he would be viable. And then, like, Anthony Simons at 4-4 has been getting decent minutes. I think he's an okay value play, especially if Covington's out. There's just one less body to go around. Harry Giles at 3-3 has been covering around the 15-minute mark. If you think Cantor gets in some foul trouble, you can take a shot in him in, in GBPs, but that's really it. On the Chicago side, so I do like Zach Levine a good amount for tournaments at 8-8. Um, he's just been playing really well this year, and he's had a good amount of upside. He's stuffed in the stat sheet. Last four games, 54, 50, 40, and 46 fans. Once again, it's a good matchup here. So is Zach Levine like an optimal spend up? I don't think so, but I do like his upside in GPPs. Kobe White, the Mets have been too up and down for me to go to him. Laurie Markin at 6-6. It is a good matchup. I think he's a decent play. Like if you landed him, that's fine. I'm not going to go out of my way to play him. No thank you in Otto Porter. Thad Young at 5K played 31 minutes. Gafford barely played. He started and barely played. So, like, I do have some interest in Thad Young. Now, will we get 31 minutes again? I don't know. So, it's like, yeah, not definitely not a must play. Yeah, Gafford again started to play 11 minutes. So, like, hard to feel confident about that. That's probably it for me on the Chicago side. So, let's move on to Sacramento and Miami. De'Aaron Fox at 8.2K. Um, I think he's a guy that... Seems priced about right. Don't love the matchup for him, but um, yeah, you can go to him in tournaments. Holmes at 6'7". Mm. And just the foul issues. Whiteside played a little bit more because of those foul trouble concerns for, or f- from him following out. That always is the risk with Rashawn Holmes. Harrison Barnes, do with him what you want. I just, I, I honestly just don't know what even to do with him anymore. He was going back to his old ways of not doing much. And then three straight games of 44, 37, and 42 fans points. I have no idea what to make of him. I don't. I literally, like, play him if you want. But I just, I don't have a good read on Harrison Barnes at all. Now, Tyrese Halliburton at 4-9, I do kind of have a good read on him. 31, 30, and 33 minutes. It's looking like we're going to get about 30 minutes from Halliburton. And if that's the case, 4.9K is a little bit too cheap for him. So, like, I think he's a pretty solid value play at that price. Whiteside had a really good game, but again, we got to pump the brakes a little bit here. Where Sean Holmes got in some foul trouble, so it's like, how many minutes would we have gotten from Whiteside if Holmes didn't foul out? Don't know. Um, so it is a revenge game narrative against Miami if you're into it. Again, he's a good point per minute guy. 
uh, but more of a tournament play for me. And that's it for Sacramento. On the Miami side, Bam at a buyout 9-2, I think is a good play at the top. Again, kind of dependent on news, right? We're waiting on Jimmy Butler news. We're waiting on Tyler Hero news. I assume Hero plays. Butler, I think, is a little bit more questionable. So, again, got to keep an eye on that. If, if Jimmy's out, I think Bam is a decent play at the top. Again, love the matchup for him. Tyler Hero, if he's uh, good to go and there's no Jimmy Butler, I think he's also a pretty solid play. Probably plays somewhere around the 35-minute mark. Again, good matchup. He will be the number one in the offense if Jimmy Butler is out. So, like, I would have some interest in him. Again, we already have Goran Dragic out. If all three of these guards are out, Jimmy Butler, Hero, and Goran Dragic, well, I'll just go right back to Kendrick Nunn and lose more money uh, because whenever I play him, he has his four games. Whenever I don't, he goes for 50. That's just how it's been going for, for me and Kendrick Nunn this season. Uh, but yeah, if all those guards are out, once again, I, or if they're all out, I think Kendrick Nunn would be a decent play there at that price. Everyone else, probably not going to get two. I know Gabe Vincent had a decent game off the bench. I don't know if I can trust that. I mean, you could go back to the well there, but I don't love it. All right, let's move on to Houston and New Orleans. So on the Houston side, Christian Wood is at 8.7K. I think that's priced about right. He can still get there, but it's looking like we're going to get about like low 30s minutes from him, which is why I think he's just like a decent play. If he was getting like 35 plus minutes, I would like him a lot more here. Uh, but right now it's looking like low 30s minutes, which just makes him a a decent play. Oladipo finally had some upside. He went for 46 fans points. He's been a little bit up and down. I think he's a decent tournament play. John Wall at 6'8 does seem too cheap. I know they limited him, but the mints went up to 30 minutes. I assume those mints are going to continue to trend upwards. If they do, I think John Wall is a little bit underpriced there at 6'8. The rest of the Rockets are stay away from me. No thank you on Boogie. No thank you on Eric Gordon. I'm passing on the rest of the value. On the New Orleans side, so Brandon Ingram, Zion Williamson, I think are both pretty decent options in a good matchup here. I would prefer Zion for the discount seven four. I mean, Zion's basically he's been really consistent. He's getting about forty fancy points a game, playing mid thirties minutes. Again, I love the matchup here. So like, I do like Zion a decent amount, and I also like the guards. Bledsoe and Lonzo Ball. Bledsoe played thirty four minutes. He's been playing thirty four, thirty six, and thirty four minutes the last three games. He's been playing better. It's a good matchup. And then you have Lonzo Ball, who's also minutes have been pretty solid played 35 the last last game uh you know when he was going in questionable so like i do have interest in both those new orleans guards in um eric bledsoe and alonzo ball and steven adams at 5-5 i think is a safe play he played 38 minutes that last game um again decent matchup here so yeah i think i think steven adams is a safer option if you can get to him lakers and boston so this game will be pretty quick don't have a ton of interest in this one uh, LeBron James, AD, both questionable. AD set out the last game, so I think he's more on the on, on the questionable side. If they're both in, I'm going to stay away from the Lakers. If Anthony Davis is out, I think LeBron James is a decent play at the top. Would still not be a priority, though. Um, Kuzma would probably be the guy I would look to first if Anthony Davis is out, played 30 minutes. Like, yeah, Kuzma would be a decent play at the mid-range. The rest, I honestly probably would stay away. They just used too many bodies last game with Anthony Davis out that, like, I don't know if we'd have to go there on this slate. On the Boston side, honestly, there's not a lot I like here. Tatum, Brown, Kemba, secondary plays to me. Tyson Thompson, eh. like how many minutes has Thompson been playing? Around, you know, low 20s. I guess he's a fine value play, but really there's just not a ton of like, like Jeff Teague barely playing. It's just, yeah, I don't like anything at Boston. Now, going from the Lakers Celtics game, which was again a game I had very little interest to this Memphis San Antonio game. I think this is my favorite game to target. The pricing, I think, from when uh, that Memphis game got postponed, what, a week or two, or a week and a half ago? I forget how long it was. Maybe a week ago. I think it was against Portland. Like, that game was a game I wanted a lot of exposure to, and then it got postponed. I think the pricing didn't move on these Memphis guys. Like, I'm pretty sure Xavier Tillman was at 3-5. I'm pretty sure Clark was at 6-1. I'm pretty sure Ja was at 7-1. Well, price didn't move. This is a fantastic matchup against the San Antonio Spurs team. I love John Moran here at 7-1. Uh, 34 minutes that last game. I think he he's full go. I think he gets his mid-30s minutes. And again, this is just a smash spot. So really like John at 7-1. One of my favorite plays of the slate. Again, still no Jonas Valanciunas. I think Brandon Clark is a decent play in the mid-range. He's been playing somewhere around 30 to 35 fancy points. I do have some interest in him. Brooks, slow-mo, stay away from me. The, the other guy has some interest in is Xavier Tillman. 
assuming he starts if he starts at center i think he's one of the best value plays of the day at 3.5k so would really like xavier tillman if he does start at center moving on to the spurs well you guys knew i was really high into rosen and john tim murray tonight i played them both i might play them both again here they are too cheap i don't know what DraftKings is doing 7k for demar Derozan against this memphis team he should play mid 30s minutes again can stuff the stat sheet and it's a fantastic spot Dejounte murray price barely moved on him again can stuff the stat sheet great matchup really like murray really like uh demar Derozan here i think they're both too cheap and a really good matchup love the the two spurs guards Keldon Johnson is viable for GPPs. He had a nice game the last time out, but he's been a little up and down. Again, Aldridge viable as well. He had his floor game, only played 22 minutes. The Mets have just not been good in LMA. They really haven't. So it's like hard to trust him in, in, in any sort of like cash game setting. The rest of the Spurs are kind of, again, they're, they're hard to trust too. Like Lonnie Walker at 4-3, I think gets around 30 minutes, but he's been a lower usage guy. Yaka Pertl 3-9, I actually don't think it's the worst play. I think we get, we're going to get around, with LMA being like limited, we're going to get around like 20-ish minutes from him. Yeah, you could do it. Again, definitely not a must play, but you could go to him. All right, last two games of the slate here at Phoenix. So, no Devin Booker, DeAndre Ayton at 7-8. Well, he was on pace to absolutely smash against Golden State, and the game blew out. Frank Kaminsky almost went for a triple-double. Um you know, that game against OKC, he was a huge letdown for me. But previous games, he was having, like, he was playing really well. You know, um, Rudy Gobert had a huge game against this Dallas front court uh, two games ago. So, like, DeAndre Aiden with no Devin Booker is definitely in play here. I think he does have some upside. Should, should play mid-30s minutes if the game stays close. So, like, Aiden is a guy I do have some interest in. I think Chris Paul is a is a decent play at 7-6. And we should uh, get around 30 to 35 minutes from him does have a you know get a boost with with booker out so paul aiden i think are both decent plays there with no doubt in booker the wings are fine too jay crowder's been the best uh the last three games 36 36 or 38 36 and 34 fancy points i think he's perfectly fine if you want to go there again these guys are kind of filler guys so like bridges crowder cam johnson Again, Frank Kaminsky almost went for a triple-double. Almost 50 fantasy points in 24 minutes for Frank Kaminsky. And he's a decent point for a guy, um, but I'm not going to chase that. Like, normally we'll probably get about 10 to 15 minutes from him. And that's on the Phoenix side, on the Dallas side. So, really, I think there's only one guy who's some interest in, and that's Luka Doncic at 10-7. Like his upside, you know, he's had back-to-back tough matches against uh, – tough matchups against Utah, where he's gone for 44 and 44 – 45 and 45 fantasy points. But – um, this is a spot I, I could see you could see an upside game from Luca. So do have some interest in him at the top. Porzingis at 7-5, did get in some foul trouble. He's been a little up and down. You can go there in GPPs, but don't love it. The rest of like the guys that are just kind of everyone's playing like 20 to 25 minutes of these like fringe guys. So it's like I don't think I want to go to any of them. Last game, Detroit and Golden State. So Jamie Grant at 7.8k. I think he's a play that is um, you know, probably the guy I like the best in the pit. I mean, eh. I would probably prefer Plumlee to him, actually point per dollar. But, like, Grant's the guy that probably has the most upside when he's getting it going. He's been the most consistent player. I think he's definitely viable there. DeLon Wright with Derrick Rose. Uh, healthy, I'll pass on. Blake Griffin did have a decent game last time out. But I'm just on – and this slate, I just don't know if we have to do it. Like, he's flashed some upside, but I don't know if I trust it. There's just games where he takes off. Plumlee's the guy I think I like the best. We should get, you know, mid to high 20s minutes from him. Decent point per minute guy. You know, the one concern with Mason Palmer is the foul concern, foul trouble issues, but like I think we get, you know, mid to high 20s minutes from him, which makes him a decent play. Can Wayne out like this is just making me mad. Can he just stop shooting 70% every single game from three? Like he continues to bail people out that go to him. When he is having a subpar shooting game, he is going to um, ruin your lineup if you play him because he does not do anything else besides score the ball. And he continues to just shoot like so well. I am once again uh, going to continue to fade him. That's it for the Pistons. Let's finish up with the Warriors. So Steph Curry at the top of 9-7, firmly in play for GPPs. Not a cash game uh, play because of his low floor. But upside is there for him making him a good tournament play. Wiggins, Oubre, Draymond Green. Just secondary plays in the slate. If you land on one of those guys, that's all right. I'm kind of filler. Wiseman intrigues me at 4 8. Minutes been a little up and down. He's a decent point per minute guy. Do like the spot here against Detroit, like targeting bigs against this Pistons team. So, like, I think you make the argument for Wiseman there for GBPs, but the rest are kind of stay aways for me. And yeah, I think that's going to do it for the video today, guys. So, 
If you have been enjoying the content so far, I would really appreciate it if you leave a like button on the video, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and hit the notification bell so you know when to upload videos you don't want to go live. Thanks again, have a great night guys, and I'll see you all tomorrow in the live stream.